This is so nerve-wracking. I haven't done this in such a long time. <laughs> Hello! Welcome to Film Study, an All-American Universe podcast with Lexi and Lexi. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. All of that, all of that wonderful stuff. I had to pause here real quick because I filmed this on December, I think December 1st, 2023, and we are now almost at april 1st 2024 when season six comes out so we've gotten much more information than we had because i think this was even before they even got back on set uh so we have a lot more information so some of my predictions were right very right and some of my predictions were wrong either very wrong or slightly wrong whatever but they were my predictions back in december and you know damone podcast coming out tomorrow and season two uh, review still on the way because life be life it so back to you know back to your programming um yeah yeah thanks for uh <laughs> thanks for joining um it's amazing that the strike is over it's felt like it's lasted such a long time uh and that's because it has lasted such a long time uh, i don't even remember how to <laughs> go about doing this um but we're grateful that the the writers have an excellent uh contract that they have and that the actors figure fingers crossed that they ratify it but that the actors uh have a contract that they're satisfied with um it's good to be back it's good to be back i'm excited to answer some questions we've gotten some news already uh and also some news that has been news for a very long time that we weren't allowed to talk about because of the strike and i'm excited to yeah answer your questions see what questions you have and share my share my thoughts i think number one and chief amongst that is that um on all american homecoming the characters of damon and amara were downgraded to recurring cast members. Uh, Sad about that, sad about that. Uh, We also got the news that, (laughs) I'm smiling. We also got the news that the character of JJ uh, will no longer be on the show. Um, I respect all of the JJ lovers. I'm sad that we will lose uh, JJ's comedic relief at times, but I, have been very open about that being, that feeling like it was the right time for him to depart uh, within the last season and really near the end of season four. Um, Just because I think the character had run its course and I think the way that they are, will handle that, I should say, is that there's a couple of different ways they can go about it. I think at the end of season five, he had some like struggles with, and they didn't really like clarify whether it was like alcohol, like whether he was an alcoholic or whether it was just like he was obsessed with partying or they didn't clarify his uh, trouble, but he basically said that he needed some time away, but then he popped back up in the season finale. But I think they laid the groundwork so that they could sort of write off his character in a way that makes sense that he's still sort of getting himself help. Um, also, you know, he can just be moving away. He can just be moving away. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to like uh, be very impactful for the storyline one way or other. I think one person that this does impact, one character that this does impact for sure is Asher. And I think that we will see less of Asher and Coastal California, their football storyline. I think that we're going to get you know, we're going to hear updates about his coaching on his own and not get as much um, just from Coastal Carolina in general, because JJ is no longer there. Or the other option is they could like sort of bring up Jabari, but I wouldn't be, I don't, I don't think that would be the best solution. So getting those things out of the way, I do hope that they, I still hope that they can figure something out with Peyton uh, and um, Kelly, Jinret, about how to figure out what the, their characters are going to look like, because I think their characters are crucial to the homecoming story. Um, and yeah, I just, I just don't think it makes sense to have 
the, let me say, I, I don't know what that will look like to have them be recurring and how, as far as like how many episodes they'll be, they'll be um, within. I, I, I'm just really curious to see how they handle that. Anyway, getting to your questions, <laughs> getting to your question as I, as I rant. Um, when the trailer comes out, can I get Kaya and Carmen on the trailer breakdown? I almost tried to get Kaya today for y'all. I'm not gonna lie. I almost tried to get Kaya today for y'all. Uh, maybe she'll pop then soon is what I'll say. But I'm gonna see what I can do when the when the trailers eventually come out. I would say the trailers won't come out for a while. I think they're targeting like a May-ish, like spring, early, late spring, early summer uh, season premiere for both shows. So we have some time. We have some time for the trailers for sure. But yeah, I'll see what I, I see. I'll see what I can do to get those two people on. Um, do I think it's possible for Layla to take back her acceptance of Jordan's proposal? And if she were to do so, how would that affect their relationship? Um, I don't see that happening. And I think it would cause a great strain on their relationship. In fact, I probably think it would end their relationship for the foreseeable future, if that were to happen. Not saying that they couldn't get back together closer to the end of at least the season, but I don't see how her accepting and then taking that back could impact it because it's, you know, they sort of have the time to question <laughs> a question that I don't I don't I just don't I don't see that happening I and I don't see how that wouldn't impact their relationship going forward if that were to happen um I don't know about Daniel Ezra's tattoos for whoever asked that question <laughs> uh what lesson do I feel Olivia was meant to learn from last season <laughs> Whether it's her journalism career or her relationship, why do you think the writers chose this route for her story narratively? I probably should have, uh, I'm literally just reading them verbatim. Um, I probably should have like pre-screened these questions and you know thought up some answers before I answered them, but that's a, that's a bit of a doozy. I think the lesson that Olivia was meant to learn is that she should feel comfortable earning, sorry, sorry, not earning, owning her career and her success. I think if you take the award that she got at the end of last season, that award episode, she was very nervous about it. She was still sort of nervous about the impact of those around her. But I think at the end of that episode, they all encouraged her to, that she deserved this. Um, yeah, everybody that's important to her encouraged, like, you, you earn this, you deserve this, so, so own this. You did good work and you helped a lot of people. So I think that's what she was supposed to take away from it, is that, like, regardless of the perceived impact or your perception of how you might have hurt those around you or things like that, they all turned out fine and ultimately what you did was for the greater good. So, so, so take part in that. Uh, is I think the lesson that she was supposed to learn and hopefully that can help her going forward to trust her instincts and go for her gut. Um, which I think has been a, I, I will go all the way back to like season three, season two, where it's, that's been a recurring theme for Olivia is to trust your instincts, go for your gut. If your gut is telling you to do something, do it. Cause it's generally for the cause. Um, and then I think in terms of her relationship, I couldn't say that there was a lesson with her relationship with Spencer. Um, and my opinion on that could change the more that I think about it, but I, I wouldn't say that there was a lesson. I think that the writers wrote it more of, or the writers took the route of that there was an actual like tangible roadblock to their relationship. Um, and that roadblock was the story. And then 
and then the roadblock block after the fact was like right their grief so i think it was just that it was like the story and their grief and once those roadblocks those tangible things were sort of done and passed they got back together but i don't know if there's any ultimate lesson uh for Bolivia in, in that um why do i think the writers went to uh i don't I, that's a great question um i'd have to i'd be curious to ask the writers myself why they why they went that route but i think again getting back to that this is sort of what olivia goes through is like learning how to trust her gut so at least for the storyline i i think that's been a recurring theme for for olivia and the writers trying to get her to to have more confidence in herself uh and her abilities as a writer and what she wants to do with her life um What's my prediction for how the first few scenes all oh, American will go time jump flashbacks, patients still on the floor, live coming back at the end of summer. I can see them doing um, in terms of the first few scenes, I feel like they could go a lot of different routes, but I could see them doing something like they did. Um, what was it? The opener of season four? Uh, Actually, like the opener of season four, opener of season five, opener of season three. I think they're going to stick on that line of doing some sort of a time jump. I think that they've time jumped for the last couple of seasons. Uh, actually, every even think about season two, they did a little bit of a time jump. So I definitely am going to still follow that whether it's going to be a big time jump or a little time jump, they're going to be they're going to do a little time jump and then slowly within that episode show uh what has taken place in terms of is like patients in the hospital, uh, which I assume she will be. I can't just see them sort of that being the end of patients as a character. Um, obviously wrapping up JJ's character storyline verbally. I don't think that we'll see JJ. Uh, I definitely think we'll see Olivia in London in the first couple of scenes. And um, we might also get like Spencer, obviously this is like a want for me, right? But Spencer going to visit Olivia and Jordan and Layla sharing their news, <laughs> sharing their news. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know as uh, for the folks that are, that are live streaming. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I see for the first couple of scenes is that all of the questions that they left off on or the storylines that they left off on, I think those will be addressed in the first couple scenes, regardless of if they take a big or small time jump. But I do think there will be at least a time jump. Um, I would hope it's a kind of a big one, but you know, well, that's just my hope. And if not a big time jump, let me say this. Uh, I hope that there's, if we see the immediacy of the aftermath of where we left off in season uh, five, I would want to have like, the first episode of season six wrap up where they are in the current timeline and then after that do a big jump from episode one to two i think that would be very daring creatively and i think like this show could find some value in doing that um let's there's some really really good questions um how do you how have you been feeling since the SAG WGA strike? I'm excited that, uh, I think I said it at the top, but I'm excited that, especially for the writers, that they feel like they got a really great deal and that it was like unanimously accepted. Um, I think the actors have some more challenges as far as AI goes. And so again, fingers crossed that that gets ratified and that you know there's no more pauses but i do hope that they continue to you know address the concerns that need to be addressed um and that they hopefully like the studios won't sort of renege on their assurances to give ai protections which i think is the biggest hurdle to sort of what the actors are uh, going through right? what we're going through right as actors um so yeah, excited, but also a little 
a little cautious there around uh, artificial intelligence. Um, will Cam and Keisha break up in season three and how would it happen? Also, would do I think, how do I think Lando's storyline will go if he's still around? I hope so. I hope Cam and Keisha break up, but they have a lot of fans it, as as far as the people that play them, as far as the cast themselves, they're really big fans of Cam and Keisha. And I think a lot of the writers are fans of Cam and Keisha. So I think that's more of a fan thing where it's, I guess, outside looking in that we're just not big fans of that particular relationship. But I do hope that they've listened to sort of fan reaction in that sense and um, <laughs> broke it up. Yeah, I just, it's not, I'm not a fan. Um, and then I think it's hard because it does feel like there's a bit of a time crunch. There's less episodes. Um, I want to say there's only going to be like 13-ish episodes. I need to double check that number, but they have a really limited time. And with the state of the industry, it's the future is more um, uncertain. Let me say that. Uh, and so I would think that they have to fulfill the story that they started with and ended with in the uh, at the end of the season two of Homecoming with Lando, but also it just feels like they have so much other thing, so many other things to wrap up with the characters, with the main characters, um, and that includes Damon and Amara. So I would personally love if they sort of. Uh, put a primary focus on that. And because of like the cost cutting me measures in the industry, I, I can't imagine that we'll see a ton of Lando either if, you know, other other budget cuts had happened as well. So it's, it's, it's very, I think in terms of all American homecoming, it's very uncertain. Um, and just because of the way that the, the landscape of their, their, their dealing with budget cuts. Are you ready for a Coop Redemption arc next season? No, I'm not. Um, I think that they tried to do a Coop Redemption arc every season, and to me at least, it always fails. I'll, I will never change on that. I think we know who Coop is. The characters know who Coop is. I don't think that's changing anytime soon. Um, do you still believe Jamie will lose the baby or have your thoughts changed? Also, what do you think the new living arrangement for each couple will be? I think that there's a greater chance that, like, again, trigger warning, apologies, meant to say that up top, but I think there's a greater chance that she won't because JJ is now no longer a part of Asher's storyline, but... I gotta say, I gotta say, I don't know if they'll, I don't know if they'll follow through. I just, they've introduced health challenges with her and it just, I don't understand how they're going to make a baby work. And so unless they're also sort of concluding Asher's storyline, I don't know if that we'll see much of that family. Um, but yeah, I think, and let me say this, I think if Asher, if Asher's character is also going to sort of start to be less focused on, I, I do think that she will keep the baby. But if Asher is still going to be, continue to be a main character, then I don't, I, I don't see a baby in our future. So it really depends on how they're going to use Asher next season. Um, how often do, oh, and then the living arrangements for the couple. Um, I think it's, yeah, I, I truly think it's probably going to stay the same as it's been. I can't see anybody doing any major move. Obviously like Jordan and Layla are engaged, but I think that they've already, they already basically live together. And then, you know, Spencer and Olivia, before they broke up, like they were always at each other's places. So I don't know if like there will be any formal, like we're going to move in. I don't think it's going to be a big deal up until we probably get closer to the wedding. And then if we have that large time jump, 
or if we are closer to the wedding, that uh, Jordan and Layla will officially move in together and potentially be out on their own. It's going to give like friends, uh, rip Matthew Perry, but it's going to give friends uh, Monica and Chandler versus like Rachel, Joey, everybody else. Um, do I think there will be crossovers this season? I don't know if they have the budget for crossovers this season. Hi, <laughs> long time no here. Long time no here, but it's good to see you. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know if they have the budget this season for crossovers. If there is a crossover, if they try to make a crossover happen, I still think they'll, they're will they going to stick to the like two crossovers that they've been averaging, two crossovers a season, like one for All-American and one for um, Homecoming. But yeah, I don't know if they have the budget. I will say maybe the crossover would be more on All-American's end because All-American might have a bigger budget. Um, do you see Simone being <laughs> bitter about the Jordala engagement? Yeah, I think naturally, right? Like, if you even think about it, how maybe how Jeffrey might approach it, I'm sure if they were to like mention it or you know give an update on Homecoming, that like Jeffrey as an actor would be, <laughs> you know, like Simone would be very upset about this, you know, just because normal life a guy that, you know, from Simone's view, right, like I used to be married to is now getting married again, Le about a year, less than a, a little less than a year um, from when we broke up. I think that people would, um, I th sorry, I think that she would respond in kind, right, to just that being very shocking, but I do, I think it's going to be like a long-term storyline. No. Is this like a philosophical question? Do I see her just staying bitter about the relationship? I think eventually she'll move on. I think uh, Jordan and Simone were not together. For, <laughs> I say this all the time, but the show takes place in such a uh, such a condensed timeline. It's only been like two, two, maybe three years, at least from where we are in this point right now. So yeah, I don't think that you know, Simone will always be bitter about this. I think as they grow into, you know, adults that, you know, she'll realize that this is just the way that life is. This is somehow, sometimes how life goes. But I think right now in the current timeline, she would have a right to be upset and in her feelings because it's, it's still so close to um, that timeline where they broke up. Do I see patients blaming Layla and do I see Layla shouldering the blame throughout the season? I, let me say this. I could see the writers going that direction. Um, and I would want to see their justification for going that direction within the dialogue and within the scenes that they choose. But I don't think patients has a reason to blame Layla because Layla was pretty much the only person looking out for her. And I could see Layla feeling guilty, but I also feel like part of Layla's character and Layla's story is not like, at least what I want for her is not like shouldering things that she shouldn't shoulder. Um, and so I can see her feeling guilt about it, but do I think that that's gonna be her full storyline is, oh my gosh, I let this thing happen. I don't think so, because I think that she's quite smart about the things that are in her control and outside of her. But I do think she will be upset, and she'll, she'll, feel, she'll definitely feel something, but I just don't know if it'll be a continued storyline for her. Um, how do you think season six will play out for Jordala? Do I see more conflict in the first half or later? Do you see breaking up being an option? Do I see breaking up being an option? And finally, do I see the wedding happening this season? Or do I think it'll be pushed to season seven because of the shortened season? I think that, you know, it'll be, it'll just be them experiencing challenges. I don't know if it'll be any, I don't, I, let me say this. I don't know if we're going to be majorly departing from what All American is. We're now in season six so we have a firm idea like regardless of like new writers that come in and 
new storylines that come in. All American stays in the vein of being the show that it is, and I think it's a pretty positive show overall. Like the characters go through a lot of things, but there is a message of hope and there is a message of inspiration, I think, that goes along with being in the show. So I don't think that there's going to be a departure in terms of like these horrible things are going to happen and it's going to like completely change the trajectory of characters. I think that, you know, they'll go through challenges, Jordan and Layla, and I'll probably say the challenges. I can't give a first or second half of the season just because I don't know what the, uh, how it'll be paced. But I'll, I'll say, I think if we see the wedding planning, right, like that could be challenging for them. Again, I, I've been open about, I think that like Laura is a is a little thread that they can pull to present some like, not major obstacles, right? But she's very protective of them both. So like a couple of uh, episodes there with them having experiencing a little tension with Laura, I can see. Um, and then all of that having resolved because I think at the end of the day, this is a very hopeful show. Um, so I don't think anything will majorly dis- uh, derail their relationship. But yeah, I can see I can see them having some challenges. And I think they're, they're a couple that tends to handle challenges really well. So I think they'll handle them. I think we'll see it manifest in different ways. Maybe they maybe they last a little bit longer than more what we typically see. But I don't think it will by any means last the majority of the season. But then, hey, you know, I didn't think that Spencer and Olivia's breakup would last the majority of the season. Um, And it did. But also, I will say this about Spencer and Olivia as well. They broke up, but they, I think, out of the, like, 20 episodes that were in, 20 to 21, I don't recall how many episodes, but out of the 20 to 21 episodes that we got last season... Spencer and Olivia saw each other and had scenes at least like 18 of those two, probably even more of those like 20, 21 uh, episodes. So it's like they don't, these characters still talk to each other regardless of whatever they're going through in, in the relationship. And I also would personally love to see the wedding. I want to see it happen in season, clo- closer to the end of season six if possible. Because I just think, I don't know, unless they do a time jump and then we see it like mid season six. But yeah, I don't want to like, that's for I want to see some planning. I want to see some tension, you know, and I also don't like I'm one of those people that thinks they're not going to get married right away. So I think it aligns with like either a time jump and we see it like at the middle, maybe mid season finale, or it's like we're seeing it at the end of the season regardless. Um, what new storyline would you like to see introduced in season six of All American and season three of Homecoming? New storylines, I would like to see them time jump. I just want to see them in adulthood. My uh, hope and my want and my wish, if it were like this were my perfect world, we would jump to the end of their senior year of college. We would see what their lives look like maybe and see, Olivia like already works for a news magazine. I want to see you. You grow so much in college, so I want to see if writing in terms of reporting is really what Olivia wants to do. Maybe as we jump to the end of her senior year, like does she want to be a does she want to be a, a like a, what am I thinking of a journalist in terms of like news and news papers that have shifted online or is she gonna go like the broadcasting route is she gonna be like a local uh a local media personality in terms of that sort of a journalist so things like that where it's like really challenging them and pushing pushing them a little bit to see like are these things that you said that you're going to be in high school the still still the same things that you want to be even for layla like you're uh 18, 19, and running an entire label, is this what you want to do for the rest of your life? I think, it, do you want to run a label or do you want to like write music? And what does that, what does that look like? Like, what is your idea of this in the long run? And really just like hammering that home as well as uh, for Spencer and Jordan, like, is the NFL still your goal? So that would really like, the theme of that would be like, is what you 
said you wanted to do really what you want to do and let's like put pressure on those things to see if that actually that actually is truly your passion um as well as like all of the great <laughs> relationship stuff that we get and as they're learning to be adults and yeah maybe like moving in together and seeing how they like, live together and obviously for Jordan and Layla, like planning a life together. And I'm sure the same can be said for Spencer and Olivia. But that's what I would want to see at season six of All American, at least the beginning of that. Um, and then season three of Homecoming, as I said, I'm sort of lost uh, in my thoughts around Homecoming right now, because I think it's such a, a self-contained and focused show that with between the casting changes and the budgetary cuts and the number of episodes i really need to get more information on like what world they're building right now or like how they're addressing the arc of this season right now before i before i can offer anything because it's just because i'm just so uncertain how they're all gonna they're gonna make that work so i think with All American, it's a bit easier because we've had five seasons of this show already, and we tend to know how, how All American operates because we just have more experience with it. And I think that they also have most of all of their main characters still coming on board. But with Homecoming, it's still fairly new, and we haven't gotten as many episodes, I think, as you know, even All American did at this, at that same point, like, so with season three, um, there's just a smaller number of, smaller number of episodes to draw from when we're thinking about the future and combined with those budget challenges and casting challenges, it's just a little bit harder to think about what the future for that could look like. What am I hoping to see from Olivia Baker next season when she comes back from her social justice internship in London? I forgot that it was a social justice internship, I'm not even lying to you. But I think, like I just said about just in general, that theme of is what you said that you wanted to do at the end of high school, at the beginning of college, is that still what you want to do because you go through so much growth in college? And I think that's with the caveat that I want them to take a time jump to their senior year of college, like that back half of their senior year at starting to like get into graduation. Yeah, so that's what I want to see is, again, does she want to write? Does she want to be a nonfiction author? Does she want to be a journalist for newspapers? Does she want to be a journalist on news media, news television? So things like that, broadcast journalism. I mean. And then how do I think that experience will shape her moving forward? I think it's just going to open her up to the world. I think that Olivia has a very limited scope of the world right now because for, and I say that for all of the characters because they've been contained to aside from a couple a couple trips to Georgia right they've been contained to LA uh, and so I think when you get people out of LA and you get people especially internationally that it just opens their eyes to how big the world is and so I think that might actually help the writers do things like Olivia continuing to challenge herself regarding like what her true passions are like let's get to the why behind my uh desire to be a journalist and not just have the journalism be the end all be all uh, right because but the why behind it is that she wants to help people and that she wants to make a difference but like again what is that why and i think that her going away to london will help with that and help her challenge herself these are a lot of good questions, a lot of tough questions. Um, what conversation or shins do you think Spolivia should have next season to have healthy communication and not repeat, repeat past mistakes from their first dating experience? I think uh, y'all really bring out the ringer for me on the first day back, <laughs> on the first day back. But I think that in terms of conversations, they have to build back up their friendship. I think I say this all of the time and they are very close friends and I, they have an understanding of each other, but it's about like knowing the other person, like the back of your hand. And there's like a level of that 
even though they understand each other, they still have so much to learn about each other. So I, I want to see them learn about each other. And I'm not sure what that looks like. I don't know how the writers can convey that in terms of a way that would like <laughs> to answer this question that would satisfy me. But I want to see things like, again, Spencer and Olivia taking trips together. Spencer and Olivia, you know, doing fun things without it being awkward, right? Like they had that fun date, the picnic, and they couldn't talk about anything else besides like work, meaning like football and journalism. And it's like not letting football and journalism be the end all be of all of their life, right? Like starting to... Talk. And then, like, not letting their family or friends be the end all be all there of their life. I think we get the sense that other couples just have this, like, natural rapport where they don't, where, like, carrying the weight of the world is not their every day. And I would love to see, because Spencer and Olivia are characters that, like, carry the weight of the world on their shoulder. I would love to see them be at a place where they don't have to carry the weight of the world, but with each other. Because I still think, like, you think back to end of season three, season four, when they were together, they still, like, so many of their conversations were, like, so deep. And I, I think the only time it wasn't deep is when they had, like, their first date. But, let's, like, let's get more of what we saw in their first date, where they're, like, having fun. But it's not about, like, you know, help me with this interview, or should I be a sponsor, or these things, like, should I take care of all of these people around me? All of those are great conversations to have, but it's like, where, how do our interests and our values and our morals, like, align? Um, and again, I would have to think about how that could be executed from, <laughs> in a way that's interesting for a TV show, but that's what I would want to see, is them starting to come together as people and enjoy each other's company without it having to be like we both understand that we carry this heavy burden um to just like lighten lighten up their relationship a little bit is is really what i'm getting at L lighten it up but also like have them get to know each other in a in a way that makes sense like in a way that is you know about like a fresh new relationship and a relationship that you're really excited about I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense. I don't know. People that are watching, let me know if that made sense. Um, is Layla a main character? Yes. Is she a part of the core four? Yes. Do I have any new podcast planned? Yes. I have uh, a couple of podcasts for Patreon members whoop, whoop, that they've requested, and that includes like I, th I think like question and answers on the relationships. So it's Bolivia, Jordala, um, Laylivia, uh, what else, what else? Uh, and then some character breakdowns, I know specifically around Layla. And then I think in terms of like the regular podcast, like my regular episodes, uh, season two, season two breakdown. I never actually have had a chance to break down season two. So I will be doing that while we await season six um and then the last question it's been a good number of questions like 20 20 something questions has been fun um any thoughts on jordala i've shared them do we think we're getting a wedding into okay i shared that i shared that yes i hope we are at the end of it though at the end of the season and then i think i want to say those are all those are all of the questions. Um, let's see. And then do I have any new thoughts? Yeah, I think I've shared like, I think all of what I shared are sort of my updated predictions. I do think mostly the same, but it's changed a little bit just because of the nature of the industry and X, Y, Z, all of that stuff. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Those are, thanks for asking the questions. Uh, thanks for supporting the podcast this year. And, I, it felt like, like, you know, half the year, three quarters of the year because of that, you know, by the time June and July, really like May, right, came is that like it was the end of the seasons and then right into into the strikes. But again, we're 
glad that those are resolving. We hope that the actors uh, get what they need so that their deal can be ratified, um, so that there is no more pauses in in filming. And yeah, yeah, stay tuned for like more fun stuff. I definitely also, sorry, I have a Demon podcast coming up as well that I'll be releasing pretty soon and definitely going to get Kaya and Carmen, anybody else that you want to hear on the podcast, as long as it's like works with all of our schedules. So again, thanks for, thanks for listening. Um, thanks for sticking with me through, <laughs> through the strike and yeah, thanks for being you. Thanks for being you. Uh, oh, one last question on the 100th episode. I did see, I, I don't know, I didn't, did I skip that? Sorry, 100th episode. Ooh. I'm going to do a special podcast on what I think is going to ha- happen for the 100th episode. Only because I want to take a look at, um, only because I want to take a look at what other TV shows that, I know the writers sort of look towards have done with their hundred episodes with their with their hundred episode. It doesn't happen quite that often, but I can tell you this. I think in general it'll be like a big event, and (laughs) this is like with every episode ever, right? It's gonna be a big event, and like there's gonna be something crazy that happens with a very important main character. Like that's all I have. Right now, I even have to look at like when the hundredth episode has falls in the season. Um, I unfortunately don't have the. Uh, I think we're at like eighty or ninety something, eighty or ninety something. So I have to see when it falls in the season, and also like get a sense of other sort of teen dramas, sports dramas to see what they've done uh, for their hundredth episode to get a sense of like what Amer- all American might do. But I think it's going to be in the same vein of the bigger episodes. So, like, think Vegas, think, um, think the Cotillion episode, think, honestly, think, like, when Simone got back, um, and there was that big thing with Spencer and Olivia, like, think of those, I mean, actually, think of the end of season four, those, like, last four, again, and, like, think Vegas, and then think Cotillion, and, that's sort of like what the hundredth episode will be, will be like. But I, I have to do some more thinking on that one. Um, again, thanks for thanks for joining. Thanks for supporting. Talk to you soon. Bye. That feels cool to say. Talk to you soon. <laughs>